Hey guys, welcome. Uh, we, we are back today. We are officially back on the very last day of the month in May. Welcome back to Wine and Design. We've been on, been on hiatus for two weeks, so I hope that you've missed us. I really do hope you've missed us. I've got a fabulous return though today, uh, speaking with a very, very wonderful and talented guest who you can see sitting pretty right next to me. I'll introduce you. Uh, introduce me first, if, if, if you don't mind. I am Adam Scoobel, interior designer, and I create, uh, get, get, bear with me, Gita, because this is my new tagline, bespoke, bold, and beautiful interiors in Sydney. I am specialising in designing interiors around my clients' favourite art pieces and collections. Fantastic. Well done. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yes, so let me talk to you about my fabulous guest, Geeta Backhausen. Let me bring up our name here, Geeta. Gee, it's been a couple of weeks, Geeta. I'm kind of a little bit bit uh, fuzzy with, with Be Live, the platform we're on. To this okay. discussion. How are you today? I'm really good, thanks. I'm really good. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. I've just been really pleased to... Uh, have you come come here on the 31st of the month? You've got so much to tell us. Um, I, I guess the, the thing about, um, the, the lovely thing about speaking with you, Gita, is, is you know, I, I met you a few weeks ago, didn't I, at uh, a gallery in North Sydney here called the Rochford Gallery. Um, and I came on a Sunday session and, and that was a really fabulous day because I remember coming in there and, meeting you and here you are telling us about your fabulous art at 11 o'clock in the morning. You know, we're given a glass of champagne and then uh, I just remember that sort of whole experience of hearing you describe what you do and, and some misconceptions I had about what you do. Um, before we kick off, though, into to what's happening with you and you've got a lot of exciting stuff happening or you have had and, and great stuff happening next week, which we're going to hear all about, do you have a drink handy? Yes, I do. Cheers to you, darling. It's Friday. It's 4.30. I know it's a bit early, but why not? It's, it's nearly the That's weekend. Right. You've been having, I bet you're so flat out because you've got big news and big things happening next Monday. Yes. Um, do you want to tell us, Gita, about your fabulous new uh, gallery that you've opened? Yeah. yeah, so approximately seven months ago, uh me and uh, my business partner, Carrie, opened an artist-run gallery called Fern Street Gallery in Jaringong on the south coast. And, um, yeah, it's really, really taken off and been received so, so well. So, yeah, it's, it's been busy times alongside, um, you know, working my own um, art career. Uh, and I have my solo show coming up at Fern Street Gallery starting next uh, on this well, this Monday. So, yes. Oh, such exciting news. We were just having a chat about the last seven months and, and that sort of evolution of success that you're telling me having. I just want to, yes. before we get into a little bit more detail, just want to say hi to Barbara, who's jumped on here, Gita. She's saying, looking forward to this fab chat uh, with kisses from Barbara there. We've got Janelle, who's a regular. Janelle is an art lover, and I believe, uh, Gita, she, she uh, is an artist herself. Know. So. <laughs> hey, thanks, Janelle, for popping on. Thanks, Bob. Stay on with us, guys. Anyone that pops on, please feel free to say hello and ask questions. We've got a fabulous artist here. Uh, Liza, we've got Liza here. Liza is actually in the US. I'm thinking, Liza, it must be very late, darling, where you are. But you're up and you're watching us and how are you, darling? So let's just kick off here. So seven months you've been going, Gita, and I think um, tell, us, tell us about the evolution of the gallery um, well, first, let's talk about you as an artist first and then we can just segue into okay. that. All right. So me as an artist, um, I think of all the things that I've done in life, I think, well, art has been the one consistent um, avenue for me. So it's been something that um, I was, you know, that was came naturally to me as, as a child as well. So I've always created and done a million courses and drawing and ceramics and, you know, you name it, I've done it, I think. Um, I think in my, what would that have been, in my early 20s, early 20s, mid-20s, <laughs> I can't remember now, um, 
I I really committed to painting and and started, you know, I've got a studio, I started really seriously painting, I started selling works. So I was back in Denmark then. And um, then when I moved to Australia in 2005, I, I continued with that journey of, of painting and, um, yeah, and exhibiting and selling and, and doing some commissions as well. So it's, it's, yeah, it's been quite a journey. And especially in the last few years, um, it's, yeah, I've, I've been very, very, very active um, in um, creating and exhibiting. So, hmm. So I'm just going to bring up a lovely image of you here, Gita, uh, in, in uh, what was uh, maybe the, the older version of, of your studio or somewhere you yeah. were working on a, a lovely piece um, a lovely piece called Where the Wind Blows. That was actually, it's hard to sort of see. We've got you in situation there with paint all over you. But um, this particular painting in the background there is probably the first thing that I noticed. Um, I went into the Rotary Gallery and that was, I just was drawn to this piece to the left. And uh, that's the piece in the photo. Um, but what an amazing journey, Giddy. So you've been here since 2005 and you've, you've gone through this process of committing by the sounds of it, to, to making this a career full time. And now, you know, you're, you're, you're getting to the point where you're opening a gallery and running things um, from our conversation just before, I guess running things in a really uh, unique and uh, dedicated way for not only yourself, but other artists that are collaborating with you in the gallery. Yeah. Can we hear a bit more about that? Yeah, so I think, um you know, along the way, I've, I've, you know, along the way of my art, I've, I've done other things. So I've had a degree in, um, you know, applied social science, and I've worked in counselling, career coaching, and mental health as well. And I have a degree in graphic design as well from way back. And then a lot of things happened in my life. That so then in 2016, I became a full time artist again, where I've, you know, done part time work before. But that change meant that I was actually a um, very prolific painter, but it was also quite isolating sometimes to be, a, to be an artist. And I also have this urge to contribute on a, on a, on a bigger scale. That's just part of me. I, I think it doesn't fit right to me just doing my art. I, I really want to contribute, yeah, on a bigger scale. So... I started to play playing around with ideas of of how I could do that and also how I could support um, Yaringong, um on the south coast of New South Wales, where my partner and I um, moved bought a house in um, in the two thousand and seventeen, I think it was, or sixteen. Anyway, um, three and a half years ago, and I wanted. I thought, well, how can I help town? Was one thing. Um, to get more visitors drawn in. And, and I thought, well, what better way than do it for art? There's an amazing arts community down here with really talented artists and award winners and, and so forth. And I also would like to run more workshops and, um, yeah, create an exhibition space. Now, then um, really, really bizarre, I, I um, got in contact, or this, this other artist, um, we bumped into each other, um, to make a long story short. We didn't know of each other, but we had we were connected through the same idea, a very similar idea, and we met up straight away. And within, I think, 45 minutes of talking, we shook hands and said, let's do this, let's set up a gallery. And less than eight weeks later, we opened the doors to Fern Street Gallery. So from the end of August last year, 2018, um, it's been pretty, pretty hectic, but we opened the doors in October um, last year and um, have had, what now, 16 exhibitions there already, both wow. from, a, a, yeah, a nice selection of, of resident artists, really talented artists, uh, as well as visiting artists. And it's really nice to see how it's been received, but also that we created a space that really can help um, artists self-represent. So, yeah, that's definitely a driver for, for both Kerry and I. That's fantastic. Congratulations on that success. You. you said it's been, you. it's been going, you know, really well over the last uh, seven months. Yeah, no, it's amazing. It's <laughs> really, really pleased. So, yes. How did you find the right location? 
Here you go. <laughs> well, the funny thing was that the day that Carrie and I met, I had walked in there. I knew the premises, but I just walked in and had a casual chat to the lady that was in those those premises at the time about my ideas. Um, and later, Carrie walked into that same the same premises and fell in love with it. They're really beautiful. Mm. So we actually kind of met through the premises because Carrie overheard a conversation with the with the tenant at the time about what I've said earlier. So that's how we found the premises and they just happened to be available a couple of months later. So it just all fell into place. It was just, I really just think it was, it was meant to be there because those yeah. premises are unique and special and right smack bang in the middle of town. So, yeah. So that's that's fabulous. So you've got. Um, I mean, I've been on to to let's let's tell everybody the the website address. Yeah. So for the gallery, it's uh, fernstreetgallery.com.au, and you spell out street. So S T W E T. Yeah. Dot com so, au. Yeah. Dot com au. And yeah. you're in the south coast at Jeringong, New yes. South Wales. Yes. Only nine kilometres drive south of Sydney. So not far. It's good for a day trip. Yeah, fantastic. I'm going to come down. We've been talking about that. Yeah. So, how many artists are you uh, are engaged in in uh, their involvement in the gallery? There's a number, isn't there? Yeah. So uh, currently, we have um, we eight resident artists. That's in, that includes Carrie and I, who are both you know uh, artists as well, and. Um, that number will uh, potentially grow. Um, we, um, yeah, we're quite selective. We, it needs to be the right match and, and right quality of art. So, um, but so eight to 10 um, there. And then we have the visiting artists that can come and rent the front part of the gallery. Um, so that's, um, yeah, so every every couple of exhibitions, it'll be somebody that comes in from the outside. And we have people from, you know, Sydney, Brisbane, Melbourne, um, inquire. So, yeah, you can be from anywhere in Australia and then come down and spend a week or two on the, on the lovely south coast and, and connecting with um, yeah, collectors from, from this area. Fabulous. You were telling me, Gita, uh, just before we jumped on here, I'm going to start to – I've got to show – Everyone here, your fabulous art. But you were um, you were really telling me about the benefits of showing uh, in a gallery in, in the situation uh, that your gallery is in. In terms of you were talking about artists can come and you know rent out <coughs> space. Um, I believe they're sort of more or less responsible for the floor, if I'm not mistaken, Gita at the time. Or yeah. uh, you know, tell me about the the benefits of of what you're doing now with Fern Street as opposed to maybe. In the conventional conventional situation, um, exhibiting in a commercial environment. Yeah, yeah, and so yeah, and, and I obviously have experience with exhibiting with commercial uh, galleries over a number of yes. years, and you know that that's all good. I mean, that has a place, um, no doubt. Um, but I think the benefit of of Fern Street Gallery and and that you know an artist run gallery is that, well, for the creators for the artists, they get to connect with their buyers um, directly. Mm -hmm. So there's no middle, middle man or middle woman. Um, and for the buyers, they get to connect with the artists, the creators, um, which is really unique. So it's, it's breaking down, you know, that barrier of, of the middle person and, and creating those beautiful connections. Yeah. It's so important, isn't it, Keita? Because I um one of the things that I really enjoyed about coming and meeting you on that Sunday is that, you know, I really got to I really got to hear from you about your process, which is very, very uh, actually quite interesting. Um and I'd like like to talk a little bit about that if we can now. Um yeah. first of all, tell me about this piece that we're looking at here on the screen. Yes, that's one of my very newest pieces that's going into my solo exhibition coming up next week. And um, it's, uh, for me, well, it, this will link into what you're asking about my process. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's, it's um, so when I paint, I don't have a preconceived idea what that painting is going to look like. I very mm -hmm. much work with the process itself. 
Um, that's both for me what's very exciting and extremely challenging, but it seems to be what works for me. And I'm quite excited about this piece because because it was full of surprises. <laughs> it's it's um, and it's kind of a, a different uh, color scheme sneaking in here um, than than I usually do. I, I I mean I've always had a tendency to work with blues in various um, shades, blue, turquoise, greens. Um, but there's some warmer colours sneaking in, such as the CNA yellow, reds, and uh, yeah, I really, it's been an interesting transition, but I'm really enjoying it. Yeah. That's what I noticed, Kita. Yeah, yeah. I was, there's a lot more oranges and reds in the collection that, that, that I've noticed, yeah. which yeah. is quite invigorating. It's, it's very invigorating piece. What, what is this piece called? Uh, that, that one is called uh, Golden Trails. Golden Trails. Right. Yes. So to explain more, if you don't mind, Gita, about your process. Like if you – I'll let you talk about it. Tell us yeah. how you start and, and, and how you yes. move through your painting okay. process. So, so I'd say the way I start is I, I, I actually never – I never start with a blank canvas. Um, meaning that I, when when I work, I always work on a body of work at the same time. So I'll always have two, three, four, five um, paintings going at the same time, mm. um, and you know, sat around in my studio, and um, yeah, and so so they sort of develop along the way. Um, and I work with the process itself. So, and when I then finish for the day, if I have paint left over on my palette, I put that on a blank. If I have any blank canvases left, <laughs> I put I put the remainder of the paint on that. So once I get to to make that new canvas part of what I'm working on, it's not blank anymore. So, and it does sorry, Kia. Oh, just fine. Ask. How did this process eventuate? I mean, how do you sort of get into a groove where you've got one, two, three, four, five paintings on the go? Did you kind of start that way or is it sort of the way things evolved after you started or how did that happen? <laughs> That's a really good question. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think it just, that's just the way it kind of, flows for me i think in the creative process um you know the creative process for me is not a, a thinking process so i think it's just something that has evolved with with me and who i am and my personality and the way of approaching things so um yeah and, and i guess you know it just works for me because there's not this blank canvas there's already a story happening on that canvas that i can build on and um yeah that's just, that's that what that's what worked for me. I think it's incredible. I think it's fantastic. I remember coming in. We keep talking about that Sunday uh, where I <laughs> met you a few weeks ago, and I was very left brain. And I've actually told this story to a couple of people since Peter. And I was like, yeah. okay, so Kendra, um, so you've got. Are you sitting by that harbour with those <laughs> boats, or yeah. do you have the picture in your hand and your painting from the picture. And I remember, I think I might have had to ask you that a couple of times because you had a very perplexed look on your face and I remember thinking, what if I said here? <laughs> it, was quite, it was quite entertaining for me actually. And I, you know, and I love, when, I love let me just say, I love when people ask me questions and I appreciate that you kept asking them until you understood it um, because yeah, well, I don't know how other people work, but, you know, like I do think a lot of people struggle with that concept of not having a preconceived idea. Um, you know, this also links into one of my most popular workshops that's called Get Out of Your Mind and Into Your Art. So right, it's really okay. about preconceived ideas out and trusting your creative self to and, and giving that freedom to express itself on the on the canvas. You know, I often refer to my canvases uh, as um, subconscious abstract landscapes. 
Mm. I mean, they're turning more and more into landscape like um, abstracts uh, over the year. And I think it might have got to do with me moving to the South Coast <laughs> and the view we have here over our green rolling hills and cow paddocks and, and so forth. Um, but it's still not, I'm still not looking at the landscape when I paint. And I'm looking up because I can see right there uh, the beautiful landscape. But um, yeah, it's really, you know, and I think that's where in my workshops, because I had to sit down and go, what is it that I do that could potentially support others in freeing up and, and trusting themselves in the creative process? So I kind of combine the um, kind of combine my background in, in counseling and career coaching and and working with in that with my you know artistic practice and, and then I did de develop this workshop, you know, get out of your mind and into your art, which is really supporting um, you know, creative souls in trusting themselves and that creative um, wisdom that we all have. Get out of your mind. I mean, it's that's, you know, I think we're all too much in our minds, aren't we, day to day generally. So can I, I just ask you, again, yeah, <laughs> what, what, do you, what sort of process will you take somebody coming to that workshop? What's, is, it, is there sort of a method or activities you'll do to get people out of their heads like I so often are far too left brain and in my head? Yes, is there a process there is. you might so take me some, through to? Yeah, so there, um, I have to, in the, in the first part of, of the workshop, um, part of them um, um, where we look at what your beliefs are around creativity and what, you know, what might limit you in that and, you know, mm. and we, we all have them, I mean, even I have them, even though I've, you know, done this for years and years and years, I still need to work on loosening up and, and being free and not getting, you know, kind of attached to the idea of an outcome and really trust the process. So I take take participants through um, a process where we look at these things um, that, that hold people back and, and dig a little bit in there and, and, and then go through a process of how to free yourself from those and have a play with that. And then we go into some exercises and I can't reveal everything. Oh, <laughs> workshop, Adam. <laughs> but um, yeah, then we, I'll take, uh, take you through some exercises um, that yeah. is, um, well, art related that help you loosen up. And, and then we go into, you know, getting the canvases out and actually have a, have a play with, um, you know, colors and, mark making and and freedom to express so what mm. happens if, if i'm tense and i'm kind of not really in that groove of, of getting out of my head what how do you think that impacts somebody's ability to kind of create something of meaning or well that's why i do those exercises so they, those exercises are designed to to bring you back into your body and mm. and out of your head and in you know into your art, into your body, into your heart. Um, so that's what they designed for. I do them in the first part, so we can get you into that more trusting space. Um, yeah, and I think the key here is to keep going. So what I often right. recommend uh, the artist is that. I mean, we can, again, we can't think our way to creating art. We can't think our way to freeing up. And trusting our project, we actually have to do it. So I often, um, you know, recommend having a little notebook in your bag, for example, um, or you know, by by the side of where you sit and watch TV, and just mm. and just scribble, just scribble freely. So you just get used to that. Your hand is moving and and making weird marks, and and you don't have to worry about it because it doesn't have to become a beautiful artwork. And the more you do that, the more you, I think, you, you can learn and build that trust in um, and having fun with that rather than it being a scary thing. And just, you know, going into it without having to create a masterpiece at the time because I think that's what often sparks the creative process in, in this kind of painting. Yeah. That expectation that I've got to create something yeah. fabulous. Yeah. Yeah. Which can kind of immobilise you, can't it? can stop you from, from creating that. Yeah, absolutely. Next question then, Gita, is 
Yeah. Can you do you do commissioned pieces where you have to produce a specific outcome? I do actually. <laughs> How does that work? <laughs> yes, that's a really good question. <laughs> um, I don't know either. No, um, I do, and and this is probably one of the bigger challenges. Um, mm. But I always feel really honoured to be asked to do commissions because people, first of all, invite me into their world, and yes. not just their physical world. But you know, I have a talk to them. What are they about? What are they? You know, like I get to know them a bit, and and so. So they invite me into the world on, 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 on many levels. And then obviously I, you know, see the surrounding where the artworks are going to be and talk, you know, colours and what it is that draws them to me and my art specifically. So I understand why they've asked me to do the commission, right? And yes. and then I go to my studio and I kind of I kind of just let all that information settle into me so again obviously I choose my colors but I just I just have to trust again that that process is gonna pan out and uh, knock on wood <laughs> so far so good yeah I delivered one recently actually and uh, yeah no they're just they're so stoked and I, I you know I, I get so happy when they're happy <laughs> you know that's the whole point of it so um, yeah right so you can still obviously uh, you know, curate uh, a selection of colours, or you have an idea where you're going, but you're still allowed that freedom, um, which yep. would which would be denying you your your true you and your process, wouldn't it? If somebody said, "Well, I, I want know. you to be up here yeah. and here," and it just yeah. wouldn't work. Yeah, and I, I mean, and that's one of the criteria. I said, "You're going to have to trust me on this." Yeah, and yeah. and you know, um, and if you, yeah, and so far so good. I have said no to. I, I've. A couple of years ago, I said no to a really big commission, <laughs> and I was a bit like, you know. But I was, like, I wasn't the right artist for them, and for me, that's about integrity. You know, I probably could right. have done it, but I suffered a lot through that process of of creating what that was they wanted. And I was like, why did you ask me? <laughs> you know, have you seen my work? My work is abstract; it's really free and loose. And they wanted something quite specific, and I said, I'm happy. I I, I went. First of all, yeah, yeah, no, I can do this. And then I went, actually, no, I can't, but I'm happy to refer you to another artist that I think might be able to help you with this. So, um, and I think for me that's important. Um, it's important that I stay authentic to to what I do and and to the client and deliver something that I I feel is, is, is right for what they want. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think it's the same, uh, Gita, whether you're an interior designer or an artist or I think you've yeah. definitely got to be able to do your own thing and, and the reason that people come to you is because they really want the essence of, of what you produce and that is your style and it's absolutely clear. I mean, I could look right now at a series of your pieces and or you and your piece amongst other abstracts and I, I feel pretty confident I can tell tell the definition in your marks and, and I can see a piece of yours as yours. Yeah. So I've got a question here uh, by Janelle. Is it acrylic or oil? So I, I use acrylic paint um, and that's because it suits my temperament most I uh, or best. I work often fast and in many, many, many layers. Um, I personally wouldn't have the patience. <laughs> <laughs> That's me being completely honest. Um, I, um, I I have worked with oils in the past, um, but yeah, I've I've always um, been drawn to the acrylic. Um, it, it just suits the way I work. Yeah. Fabulous. There you yeah. go, Janelle. It's a, it's definitely an acrylic paint. So this is the new work, isn't it, with the reds? Yeah, I know. Who would have thought? That's like amazing. <laughs> it's fine. I love uh, it. Yeah, I do too. I have to say, I'm really, uh, really falling in love with red. Um, so yeah, that's quite quite bizarre in a way. But uh, yeah, that's good. What Am piece I is this speaker? Huh? What's this piece called? I have just called it Red Landscape. Red Landscape, fabulous. Yeah. Oh, I love this. Yes, so um, that was actually a finalist in the Blacktown City Art Prize a couple of years ago. 
So um, the valley, that one is called. It's all intuitive for you, isn't it, Gita, with the way that you're able to just connect the colours and, I mean, I think you're, you're absolutely unique at the way you do that. I mean, you can have various tones of blues and into the greys and here we've got some beautiful sort of purples and sort of magenta mm. almost tones, but it just the connection between all of those um, colours and, and yeah. the line is amazing, so it's gorgeous. We're, we're, we're out of time, but I think please let us all know about next week. Tell us about what's happening uh, on the 3rd of the 6th at uh, Fern Street Gallery. Yes, so my solo, my two-week solo exhibition opens on Monday at Fern Street Gallery in Jerangong. Um, I'll be there every day from 10 a.m. Um, open every day uh, for the 14 days. On Saturday, the 8th of June at 2 p.m., the official launch is there. So please come and join me to, um, to celebrate the launch of my exhibition um, called In Between. Fabulous. Well, I think it's definitely worth a day trip. I'd say anybody, if you haven't seen Gita's artwork in person, I mean, my, my uh, screens here are not doing it any justice. I mean, you can see the, the variance in the colour connection and, and the different, uh, the new, the new uh, range is absolutely beautiful. It's gorgeous. Uh, very expressive and unique to you, Gita. I think, um, so go down to Fern Street Gallery. I, I need to go down to Jeringong and check it out. And um, I, I just want to congratulate you, Gita, on the last seven months. It's really wonderful to know that, um, you know, your entrepreneurial uh, <laughs> experience here in opening this gallery with Kerry. Uh, her, yes. What's her full name, Kerry? Kerry Bruce. Kerry Bruce. Kerry Bruce. So yes. to hear that it's been such a great success in seven months is absolutely fantastic at this day and age. And um, I just wish you all the very best with it. You certainly deserve it. Janelle's just jumping on to say what a lovely chat and it has been a lovely yeah. chat. Yeah. Are you, I guess you, I could say you're doing anything fun tomorrow, Gita, but I bet you've got, you are strapped and, and getting everything ready for Monday. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I also want to say thank you to you, Adam. You are it's so lovely to see an interior designer that works around art. I really take my hat off to you. And, um, well, look, so, at, look at this. It's a joy to be to be speaking to someone so vibrant and and um, I just love your process, Gita. I just love that you have your own process. And, you know, unashamedly, uh, it is what it is. It develops, and I think the creative process behind what you do is 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 very unique, and and uh, the beautiful results speak for themselves. So, all the very best next week. I hope you don't get to. Oh, Shane's jumping on. We've got everyone jumping on. I'm going to do a replay, guys. I'll do a, um, I'll do a uh, replay so everybody can jump on and, and, and watch our talk. But um, you have a wonderful weekend, Gita, and don't don't Thank stress. You. It'll be amazing next week. And everybody get down to the Fern Street Gallery in Jeringong. Uh, I'll put the address of the gallery in there and go and see Gita's new exhibition. It will be fabulous. Uh, and I wish you all a fabulous weekend. And we'll say goodbye for now and see you next time. Thank you. Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye, Gita. Bye.